It's time to put an end to all the speculation and cut these shattered backboard Jordans in half to see if the leather quality is really that good and to see what's inside of them and if they're worth the thousand dollars that I paid for them. This video is to celebrate the 100,000 subscriber mark, so thanks for everyone who helped get me here. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing um, because it's been really fun. And uh, it's crazy, five months ago, I was at 5,000 subscribers and I cut open the first pair of shoes, which was the Doc Martens. Now, five months later, we went from 5,000 subscribers to 100,000 subscribers, which is crazy. So thank you guys so much for all your support. And a special shout out to Zach from Jerry Rig Everything. He's a good buddy of mine and he he's like a tech expert and he tears apart different phones and everything that comes out in the tech world. And he told me that I should do the same thing but with the leather industry. So that's when I started cutting shoes apart. So special shout out to him and um, yeah, onward and upward hopefully. So a little bit of information about these sneakers. They're Jordans, the Air Jordan 1s. They are the Shattered Backboard Editions, the 1.0s. They came out in 2015 and they retailed for $160. These aren't originally $1,000. They are originally $160 and speculation has made them go up to $1,000. And the reason that I chose these shoes is one, because when we did the 50,000 subscriber mark video, I asked what you guys wanted to do for 100,000 subscribers and these kept coming up and I thought it was a really nice way to start pivoting towards like sneakers now that it's getting a little bit warmer outside and hopefully people will be able to go outside soon with all this corona stuff going on. But more importantly, people talk about these shoes like they are the highest quality Jordans. Anytime you search what are the best Jordans or what is the highest quality um, material Jordans, what's the best leather in any Jordans, these are always at the top of the list or near the top of the list. So I thought it would be a really good one to do from a leather professional leather worker standpoint and to start giving us maybe a, a high watermark of what high quality sneakers are or maybe what people consider high quality and um, kind of end some of the speculation and some of the rumors going around about how good this leather really is. And now that we're venturing deep into sneakerhead territory, some of you guys that are watching this might not have seen any of my other videos. So I wanted to go over quickly why we cut them in half. The first reason is leather quality. It's really, really hard to judge leather quality if you can't see a cross section of this leather. And even a leather expert on the last video where we did the all white AJ ones, I got this wrong. Some of the shoe isn't leather. I was really surprised by it and I never would have known that if we didn't cut it in half. The second reason is construction. These shoes and boots are so interesting because people talk about the quality without knowing what's inside of them. And it's really hard to know what's inside of them without cutting them in half. And it's, it's almost like people talking about a car and how good a, a car is without ever like popping the hood on the engine or sitting inside a car and seeing how the car is built. So that's kind of how I consider this whole cut in half series and why I do it. To me, there's a lot of information that can come from cutting these shoes in half. Now let's talk about what we can gather from the leather without cutting it in half. Um, these shoes don't have a rolled edge like these white Jordans had. So there's a, a little bit of information we can gather from it without cutting it in half. So there basically is two types of leathers on, leather on the shoe. So let's start with the white and orange leather. So you can see this raw edge and there's a lot of really loose fibers on it. Um, that's not always a sign of a bad leather, but it's not a sign of a great leather. Usually you wanna see a really tight packed grain pattern and these little flyaways here are not usually in that in a high quality leather, but this leather is tumbled. And tumbling basically, it takes a firm leather, which most leathers start out with. They basically throw it in a giant dryer and it tumbles it around without heat and softens those, those fibers up and makes the leather really soft and give it, gives it that pebbled look. This leather is also dyed all the way through, so it's really hard to see if it's a chrome tanned leather or a vegetable tanned leather. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll put the, the, the leather basics video playlist in the description so you can watch through those and kind of educate yourself on the basics of leather quality and how leather um, is judged. I'm guessing by the price point of this at $160, this is a chrome tan leather because chrome tan leather is a lot more affordable to make. It's a lot faster to make and it's, it's a more common way of making leather in China and all these other countries that 
these shoes are made in. And now for the cut of the leather, basically all leather comes from, uh, let's see, which side I'll put it on. I'll put it on this side well, to cover up toasters licking. There's a cross section of leather. The top part has the grain in it, which is the most tightly packed fibers. It's the highest quality stuff. It's the most sought after stuff. And as you go down that cross section, it gets more fibrous and it's a cheaper quality. Um, if we look at this cross section on this orange leather that we can see in this uh, white leather, you can see a little bit of that grain pattern. So I think it's a decent leather just from being able to see the grain. So another thing that we can look for, if you don't wanna cut your shoes in half and you, wanna, you, you don't see a cross section that's just a raw edge, you can also look for the little pores on the surface of the leather. And don't be fooled by fake pores. There's a difference between the real pores and the fake pores. Because if you look at this black leather, this looks like it has pores, but it's actually an embossed print to make it look like it has pores. And the white and orange leather actually has the real pores of the animal, the cow, visible. So how do you tell the difference between fake pores that's embossed and real pores in a higher quality full or top grain leather? If you just lightly scratch the surface, you can see those pores kind of open up a little bit or shift a little bit and stretch out a little bit. That tells you that it's a real pore. But if you do that to a fake pore, like on, these, on the black leather here, those pores don't open up, it stays the same shape, not a whole lot is happening. So that's an identifier of a fake pore print on top of the leather. So that brings us to the black leather and I think it's leather, but I'm not 100% sure. It's really hard to tell, but this black leather is more similar to the white Jordans where there's a layer of plastic or rubber on top to make it more of a finished look, maybe to add a little bit more of scratch resistance But to really find out, we need to see a solid cross section of the, of the leather and be able to kind of skive a few layers off it to see what's going on underneath the surface of the leather. So that kind of brings us to the part everyone's been looking forward to but mostly dreading. It's time to cut these in half. Oh, and one more thing before we cut them in half, actually. So the Toasty Gang shirts are finally available. They should be should be available just below the video in that little merch area. There's three different shirts, and whichever shirt sells the most is gonna be a mainstay in the merch site. But all three of those artists earn 10% of any shirts that are sold. So support this channel by buying a shirt. Support those artists by buying a shirt. Now let's cut the shoes in half. I'm not ready for this. Okay, we got it cut in half, and I don't, I don't know if you guys could tell in the video, but I was shaking cutting this apart. Um, so let's see what's inside. So pretty much the same as the all white ones. That's to be expected, but did you guys hear how fast I popped that air unit? I was surprised at how shallow the foam is in between the rubber and the air unit. That was kind of interesting. So I think for this video, instead of ripping all the guts out of one of these, I think I'm actually gonna give it away. So if you want half of a thousand dollar sneaker for your wall or something, 
Um, I'll explain at the end of the video how to win it. So now let's talk about the leather. So starting with the orange leather, what am I looking for? I'm looking for that grain pattern. And as you can clearly see, that grain pattern is there and you can even see some of the hair follicle pores in there as well. So that's gonna make it a stronger leather. It's gonna make it a longer lasting leather and it doesn't need that cheap plastic coating on it to make it look like leather. So I would say it's a pretty good leather. Is it the best quality leather in the world? No, but for $160 sneakers of the, well, at least that's what the MSRP is, I think it's a pretty good leather for the price. The black leather, on the other hand, I'm pretty sure this is from that split portion of the hide that we talked about in the White Jordans video. And it, we go through that a lot more, so if you, want to, if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch that video. But they put that heavy layer of plastic on top to hide the fact that it's from that split portion without any grain structure. And then they press that pore pattern inside or on the outside so that it looks like a nice leather. So the black is not very good leather. It's pretty cheap. It's maybe not as bad as the white um, Jordans were, but it's still pretty bad. Um, if the black leather was a really high quality leather that had the grain in it and had the same quality as the white, the white and orange leather, I would be really impressed with these shoes. And I would say that they live up to the hype of having a really high quality leather in them. But that black leather is pretty terrible leather. Um, so I still think they're, they're a really good leather for a pair of sneakers. Are these worth $1,000? Clearly no, um, but that's not really the question that needs to be asked because these weren't originally sold for $1,000. The question is more, are these a high quality leather? And I would say they are. I think they're a really good leather. Now, how to win one of these halves to hang on your wall or to put in your sneaker collection or whatever. Go to my, go to my Instagram page and just follow me or is it follow on Instagram? Yeah, follow me on Instagram. Like the post that's associated with it because we do these the breakdowns that have everything labeled. So there'll be one that's this shoe cut in half with all the different parts labeled like that. And um, leave a comment in that post and we'll choose one random person that commented and we'll double check to make sure you're following the Instagram account. The Instagram is at Rose underscore Anvil and we'll ship it to you. So that pretty much wraps up the thousand uh, dollar shattered backboards i'm still a little uh sick to my stomach over this one it was a lot of money we just cut in half but it was so worth it because it was really fun and you guys asked for it and hopefully this video will get enough traction to make it worth it so if you want to help out with that just do a few little clicks for me like the video subscribe to this channel because it makes a huge difference and if you want a t-shirt the toasty game t-shirts to support the channel and to support those artists, they should be just below. So thanks for uh, making it through the entire video with me and hopefully I didn't trigger any panic attacks. So thanks for everything, see ya. Oh, and we gotta go fix the D on the DuPont sign. That's, an, that's a super old reference for those of you who've been with me forever. So let's go fix the D on the DuPont sign. Thanks guys.